This is the Final Whistle Podcast from the Wrexham AFC media team. The final score, Wealdstone 1, Wrexham 2. That was the feel-good story of the year. What a fabulous win. We're getting a bit spoiled, aren't we now? The amount of away wins we're getting, the amount of late away wins we're getting, the amount of come-from-behind wins we're getting, the amount of Reese Hall Johnston last gas winner away wins we're getting. But it's a pattern I embrace. It was fantastic. Honestly, what a game that was. Uh, and what an excellent performance, I have to confess. Just when we went behind of just over a quarter of an hour left, I started trying to weigh up you know, just how I was going to explain. We played really well and lost again. But, no, I didn't have to worry about it because the scoreline in the end gave some reflection of how the game had gone. Wrexham played exceptionally well, roared on by a brilliant away support, again of nearly a 1,000 fans. And considering all the problems we've had with the weather in the last couple of days, considering the fact that Wilson's game was called off in midweek because of their pitch as well, uh, well, massive credit to Wilson for getting the game on and massive credit to that Wrexham fan army travelling down. And my word, did they get their rewards. Interestingly, Wrexham started with Dan Jarvis playing behind Ollie Palmer again, rather than picking a second striker. And also, the, the decision on which wing-backs would start was Hall Johnson and McFadden. So Bryce Susanna was back on the bench. No other real surprises apart from that. And Wrexham, I've got to say in the first half, looked very good. Really nice approach play. Should have scored goals and didn't. Again, maybe if you want me to be picky, perhaps we didn't create the chances we ought to have done, considering how good our movement was. But we were impressive. Six minutes in, O'Connor putting a free kick into the box, and Jordan Davis with a brilliantly speculative overhead kick from 15 yards out, which didn't go wide, of dropping into the top right corner. Then a free kick from just outside the box, 25 yards out. Davis stepping up and looking for the top corner and not quite hitting it. But Wrexham were continuing to make the pressure. A great ball over the top by Toza. Jarvis sprinting in one-on-one with the keeper. A superb sliding tackle by the Wilston centre-back Cook. But Cook had already got himself booked early on, which would be crucial. And as... Wrexham continued to knock on the door. They just weren't making open chances, despite all the good approach play. The movement from midfield was excellent. Uh, Jarvis was, was popping in and out and creating little pockets for Young and Davis to attack, and it all looked lovely and fluid, but it wasn't quite carrying on into the box. There was one move where Palmer was furious that Davis didn't continue his run because it looked so like a, a, a pre-panned sort of system of play and he just laid the ball off blind expecting Davis to be tapping it in and he wasn't there at all. Um, but it was it was really good fluid football to see. O'Connor uh, anchors the midfield nicely and allows the players in front of him to rotate. Wheelson had a, a decent little spell around halfway through the first half but didn't really threaten much except for when a corner was cleared back to the taker, Henry, and he lashed the ball across the face of goal. One of those frightening looking crosses, but you know it was, it was well struck and probably quite difficult to get on the end of. There was a potential crucial moment in the 24th minute when Jordan Davis was running forwards. He was fouled uh, by Cooper. When they went down a, a little tangle davis got up first and barged into cooper i, th I think that's the correct word to use really it's a sort of chest barge more than anything else into cooper it was a silly thing to do cooper went down very theatrically and then mcavoy the center back came charging up and shoved davis he i mean i'd argue he shoved him a bit harder in a way but davis didn't make a fuss of it he stayed on his feet uh the referee ultimately gave both Davis and McAvoy yellows, so Cooper very lucky to avoid punishment, and it could have been a red. It could have been a red. I don't think it is a red. I think the referee is right. Um, but and, uh, uh, he could have given a red. Referees give reds for those. Look at what Tyler French was sent off for at Eastley last season. It's a dangerous thing to do, and if we had another first half red card, you, you really would start to despair, wouldn't you? Thankfully, Davis did stay on. Oh, thank goodness he stayed on. 
And Wrexham continued to put pressure on again. Davis again was really in the middle of it, just more than half hour mark. Terrific run by Davis into the left channel, got into the box, surrounded by defenders. He fell. It wasn't a foul. He wasn't asking for a foul. But McFadzi, high up the pitch, won it back in the box and found Jarvis, who put toe poked a little square ball to Luke Young. He whipped in a first time shot, which whistled just wide of the right post. And McFadzi was was really impressive going forwards was winning a lot of the ball high up the pitch the next chance Wrexham had though was in a, a remarkable conclusion to the half and to say a couple of minutes left in the half and, and quite frankly you, you would say in terms of approach play and quality of play and control of the ball and control of the match Wrexham looked fabulous in terms of making stuff happen in the box wasn't enough um, it was too early in the game to panic but you did feel that way and then <laughs> from the 43rd minute onwards Remarkable passages of play. How Wrexham didn't score uh, is beyond me. It all started off with a long throw from Toza, which was half cleared. Palmer, around the penalty spot, did well to pivot and go for power, but he couldn't control it and lashed it over the bar. Uh, moments later, as the game was about to enter into added time, there was a crazy spell of pressure. Young playing a great ball over the top. Jarvis looking to run one-on-one -on -one down the right channel. And the goalkeeper, Wickens, who had an excellent game, rushing off his line, just beating Jarvis to it. Moments later again, the ball played in. Davis breaking down the left-hand side, feeding it into the box. There was a terrific scramble till the ball came out at the other side for Hall Johnson, who managed to turn amongst all the bodies and hit a shot from about five yards wide of goal, which hit the post and bounced out for a goal kick. Kick. And still Wrexham kept pushing straight from the restart. Wrexham got a terrific fast breakaway again. Jarvis doing well to feed Young. And Young from 20 yards, made, well, he, he got himself that close by some really nice approach play. And then it opened up for him and he pulled it just wide. So frustrated he was. Ironically, the ref added two minutes on. That came pretty much at the end of the two minutes. That time probably added on for time wasted by Wickens, the, the goalkeeper. And he decided for some reason to add another two minutes on. And Wheelston got back at us. And it was it was bizarre to think that they could actually have weathered that storm where a goal really felt like it was coming and half time would save them. And then actually could have nicked one just before the break. Felt a bit like that when they took the lead as well, but more of that in a moment. So half time, Wrexham. Very pleased with the performance, but not pleased with the fact that Wickens hadn't really had many saves to make. Well, Wilson started the second half superbly. They got on the front foot. The first two and a half minutes, Wrexham couldn't get the ball. And Wilson really pounded away at the edge of our area. And for the first time, looked like they had a goal in them. They only really had one moment of danger, though. O'Meara doing brilliantly to turn Toza. And from 15 yards, Lasher shot in from aiming for the uh, bottom right corner. Lanes did really well to dive across at full stretch and push the ball away. But Wrexham regained their equilibrium. That midfield trio started to take control again and Wrexham started to make more and more uh, chances. A breakaway found Jarvis on the right side of the box. A cute little back heel by him found Palmer. He worked it inside to Young and Young amazingly still hasn't scored this season. And it looked like this was the day. Went so close with a couple of those chances in the first half. Received it, carried it into the box, got to within about eight yards and then drilled it for the bottom corner. Fabulous save by Wickham who got down low to his left and managed somehow to scoop the ball to safety. Excellent goalkeeping. And poor Young, not for the first time, had his head in his hands. Wrexham went close again from the corner. It was cleared, but came out to the left-hand side. Davis whipping in a great cross, and Hayden just couldn't quite get on top of his head were enough and planted it over the bar from six yards out. The pressure continuous. Uh, great ball over the top again by Toza. Rex were often working that. Jarvis making late runs, and Toza and Hayden pumping balls over the top. Toza this time found Jarvis down the right channel and he squared it. McFadzi, and it was really in the second half, often the player getting up to support the striker on the stretch from a tightish angle, drove the ball into the side netting. Again, a really close thing. The Wrexham fans behind the goal going crazy. Even more crazy when they had a perfect view of one of the craziest scrambles I think I've ever seen. I mean, honestly... I guess scrambles rarely lead to goals because there's so many bodies in there. But this one, how it stayed out, I don't know. Ball played into the the goal mouth. 
three times Wrexham players within about one or two yards of the goal hit shots on goal that somehow were blocked was parried somehow they managed to scramble the ball away it was quite remarkable the pressure building and building and building Hull Johnson getting a ball on his left foot and lashing in a powerful shot from all the 30 yards Wickens grabbing hold of it at the second attempt it was just incessant and frustrating for Wrexham that they couldn't get the reward they deserved and then, in the 72nd minute, it got substantially worse. Now, when Wrexham get the analysts' footage, they're going to want to have a very close look at this goal. Something went badly wrong. Because <clears throat> Wealdstone, well, Henry in midfield was a, is the player they'd look to play through. He's their playmaker. And he was struggling to, to, to influence the game, quite frankly, because Wrexham's midfield were on top of the match. But Rex, uh, Wilson had a spell of possession. They just brought on a substitute, Brown. And he made a bit of an impact, supporting the striker. Henry got the ball in midfield. Well, firstly, I mean, a lot of things went wrong. Rex really allowed him a bit of space. Uh, he dwelled on it for a bit and then picked his pass. And Brown found himself absolutely miles cleared of the defence. Either... Wrexham really misjudged it badly, allowed a player with passing range space and allowed a striker to make a run in behind them, or he was offside. Anyway, the flag stayed down. He was one on one with Leinton. Leinton came out to meet him. Brown went down. It's impossible, to be honest, from my view, to, to say whether Leinton played the ball or not. Wrexham complained, but the referee gave a penalty. I didn't feel they were the most vehement complaints you've ever seen in your life. And Brown picked himself up stepped up and drilled it into the bottom right corner but Leinton went the right way frustratingly for him and it just went under his arms Leinton uh, you can't blame a keeper for not saving a penalty but he was frustrated he got really close to keeping that one out Wrexham responded brilliantly within a minute of the goal going in we nearly were level good pressure ending with the ball ricocheting across to Jarvis 15 yards out on the right side of the box he pivoted and hit a delicious chip I think he was trying to cross it into the goal mouth because there were so many players in there but he chipped it it beat the keeper and McAvoy the centre back made a brilliant header to just get it off the line he was a fraction away from it going over but he managed to stretch towards his own goal and head the ball clear 12 minutes left though still no goal Wheelstone digging in and fighting for it. I mean, Wrexham's domination now was absolute. But Wheelstone was defending doggedly. And so Wrexham made changes, changed their shape. Uh, Max Clowers, who'd had a very good game, came off as a, a tactical sacrifice with Liam McLinden coming on on the right wing instead and Wrexham reverting to a flat back four. And Jordan Ponticelli came on for Tom O'Connor. So Wrexham really were essentially a 4-2-4 a four -four as such. And, well... The chances kept coming. In fact, with nine minutes left, well, an instant happened that just made you think this this isn't our day. Young with a fabulous ball over the defence. Jordan Davis cleared of the last defender, 10 yards out. Meza with a perfect right-footed volley back across the keeper. And Wickens with a save out of the absolute top draw, lunging across and somehow saving away. It looks to have gone past him. A remarkable save. And he just thought, we can't beat this guy. It's just not happening. <laughs> got even more cruel when on a breakaway uh, Wheelston could have snatched a goal Wrexham brought on Bryce Susanna for McFadden as well and because obviously I mean he's still looking for match fitness and Hosanna's first involvement a bit cold perhaps was a mistake in his penalty area a ball driven in he was there at the far post but he, he miscontrolled as Claydon tackled him but slashed the ball over when he really should have done a bit better so lucky moment for Hosanna but to be fair he then was able to focus on what he was there to do, driving forwards, and he got into some fabulous positions and caused Wilson a real headache. Wrexham continued to push. Five minutes left. Davis, from 25 yards, lashing a shot across the keeper, but just wide. Davis then picking the ball up on the edge there, getting another good chance to shoot, but oh, it opened up beautifully for him, but he didn't quite get hold of his shot, and it sort of skipped through for the keeper to save. The key moment came as the 90 minutes were close to being up, Wrexham knocking it into the box, a scramble on the edge, and Cook, who, like I said, had been booked early on, handled it, as Luke Young was trying to nip in and, and, and work a position for a shot. Wrexham went up straight away for the free kick. The ref gave it and sent Cook off. 
I'm not sure how deliberate it was. Again, I was a bit on the blind side. It didn't look terribly deliberate, but I guess the way Wrexham all just went up spontaneously, uh, maybe it was. And then what followed was madness. Jordan Davis stepping up for the free kick, sweeping it over the wall. A terrific strike with real power, how he kept it down from such close range. It cannoned onto the bar and came flying back out to the edge of the area where Davis incredibly managed to move across to his right, retrieve it, take a lovely little touch to get it back on his left foot and then ripped it into the top left corner. A fabulous, fabulous goal. The bloke loves that goal of the season trophy, doesn't he? This time he's even got the assist as well. Smash it against the bar and retrieve it himself. Wow. Remarkable stuff. And down to 10 men. I mean, I don't think that the Dean and 10 men made any difference, in all honesty, because already Wheelston were under a huge amount of pressure. And already uh, Wrexham were, were pushing on. And, and uh, it was really striking a Wheelston with 11 men were just launching it straight back at us. It was coming straight back at them. They needed to do something about that, but they couldn't. And uh, Wrexham continued to push on, push on, got around the defence a few times, couldn't find a man. And then in the 96th minute came that breakthrough. A break again down the left. Ball played into the box. McAlinden did well to retrieve it and pull it back. And there was Reese Hall Johnson, 15 yards out, to smash it with power. Took a deflection off uh, Okimo, who was standing in front of his goalkeeper. And Wickens had no chance. Remarkable scenes. Wrexham fans and players going crazy. Uh, worryingly part of the... The support at the front of the stand collapsed under the weight of the celebrating Wrexham fans. It looked like nobody was, was hurt. I do hope so. And Hall Johnson went off and did the iconic Paul Mullen thing, ripping his shirt off to reveal his sports bra and celebrate with a frenzy in the corner of the pitch. Wrexham had to defend as Wilson hurled the ball forwards for a couple of minutes and then were home and dry. A remarkable victory and an excellent performance. Like I said, I mean, Lainton... Gave away the penalty, OK, but also made an excellent save at the start of the first half. The centre-backs were impressive. Cloweth, I'm really enjoying how he gets forwards and overlaps. And with McFadzie, and he's really encouraged to do so. And they, they've worked a really good and standing out already. It's really interesting, unexpected uh, element of our play. <coughs> Hayden on the right-hand side made a couple of mistakes when we were trying to rush and get an equaliser, but was massive as always. Uh, won some really imposing challenges, looked physically stronger than Umera, and that's saying something. And Toza was excellent again. Toza again physically handled Umera really well and played some good balls out from the back. So the back three, very impressive. Uh, I say Cleworth was sacrificed for tactical reasons. There was no uh, way that his performance had let anybody down. Likewise, Tom O'Connor, who was brought off so Wrexham could push more attacking bodies forwards. He was very strong and tidy in midfield as Wrexham's midfield dominated the game. And like I said, by doing his job well, it's released Young and Davis, who are both outstanding, both non-stop, tearing up and down, box to box. Davis, for me, edged it as man of the match. He scored that fabulous goal and he was always creative. He was always threatening. Wilson defenders will have nightmares about him tonight. Um, but both the two of them, both excellent. Excellent range of passing by both Young with some lovely long passes. Really good. And how Young didn't get a goal today, uh, I'm not quite sure. On the flanks, Hall Johnson, well, started extremely brightly. Had a spell where he wasn't getting forward as much, but he kept going. The, the balls into the box weren't always all that great. <clears throat> but he kept going, kept working, and came up with the goods at the end. So, again, good performance by him. But fancying was excellent going forwards. I'm still encouraged by him. He put some good quality into the box. He gets into fabulous positions and he presses superbly as part of a unit. He wins the ball back. He won the ball back at least three times that I can remember in the Wheelstone penalty area. And he looks a really interesting asset. He does. Defensively, he had the odd issue. Um, but at the start of the second half, when Wheelston started putting pressure on us, their wing-back, Mardle Smith, was constantly getting free kicks in fact I was amazed that McFadden didn't get booked they were I don't know how to interpret it I thought they were soft free kicks so maybe the ref was wrong and McFadden did well defensively but if you keep fouling your bloke when as he runs past you all the time if they are fouls then that's a little bit of a worry but he hasn't got much match fitness in him so yeah McFadden I was surprised the ref didn't book him as he thought they were all fouls, but he, he got away with it. And 
I, I, yeah, I think it was harsh. I think he was quite good at trying to be strong with the, there was man and was penalised by the ref. But certainly going forwards, he was very, very good indeed. And then Jarvis playing off the front, very impressive. Best I've seen Jarvis play in terms of impact on a match for for quite a bit actually. Um, well, he's been injured though, I suppose, only to be fair. But he played very well. He was sharp. His movement allowed for Davis to attack the box, allowed for Young to attack the box. And I liked that. I mean, obviously, Mullen will return to the team when he's available again. But Jarvis has certainly given us an interesting option, which didn't look all that likely a couple of months ago. And then Palmer won a lot of aerial duels, held the ball up very well, had some intelligent play. Didn't really get a sniff of goal apart from that snapshot in the first half. I think maybe a little frustrated that he wasn't hit more accurately in the penalty area. But he won't be too frustrated because that's a hell of a big three points. So Wrexham continuing with their excellent away form. And now on to Tuesday, which feels like it could be quite a big one. With a final score of Wheelston 1, Wrexham 2. I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC. This is the Final Whistle Podcast from the Rexham AFC media team.